I started in 2020 all in on Bitcoin. Then I started shifting towards Ethereum. Then I bought a basket, which included a bunch of metaverse plays, some social tokens, some um, layer ones, other stuff. And I basically kept that. So I don't think I've traded anything apart from buying some NFTs. Um, and then, yeah, I the only other major switch was I got I sold most of my Bitcoin for Ethereum um, about six, nine months ago. I think two things happened. First, firstly, price got ahead of network activity. So what happened was people weren't there weren't there wasn't a lot of new transactions in the network. I the value transacted wasn't going up and the number of new wallets or active wallets wasn't going up. So price went up and the network didn't and it didn't stick. And the issue was inflation. So why does inflation matter? Well, because the crypto is still a retail network, right? It's really driven by retail. And if you've raised prices on people and wages don't go up as much, they've got less discretionary income. That discretionary income was the dollar cost averaging that went into crypto. And so people stopped because they had to pay their grocery bills or their rent. So that's why it just stopped. So it shows how macroeconomics influences crypto markets in ways that people don't quite yet understand. But that was the big that was the big thing that happened end of last year and has continued to weigh on the market this year because network growth hasn't really improved. So we've seen rotations within the market. So we saw people switching from ETH to layer ones and we saw NFTs hold their value, you know, stuff as people are reallocating what they've got in the market, generally reallocating ETH. Um, you know, a lot of Bitcoin people, ha you know, tend to stick with Bitcoin. Um, but a lot of the ETH people reallocated to different parts of ETH, like, you know, NFTs particularly got a lot of attention. The balance of probabilities is that we made the low last year. We retested the low this year. And I think the low is in. But who the hell really knows, right? So, you know... I got the back end of last year wrong, like everybody else. I thought, you know, we were going to get this run and, and we didn't see it. I think we've thrown a war, 8.5% inflation, the Fed raising interest rates, all at crypto. Um, we've thrown Chinese um, ban. We've thrown so much at it and it didn't make a new low. Kind of usually that's a signal that the market kind of has found its, its bottom. And so now we're looking for, okay, what are the upside catalysts? The upside catalyst would be if economic growth starts slowing, um, we're likely to see then long duration assets, things that um, tend to outperform in low growth environments. And crypto tends to do very well in, in that kind of environment, much like Cathy Wood's ARK does, those kind of you know longer term assets. So that's what we're looking for. Um, as the spark, I think, is a is a change in structure so people fear inflation less and start fearing growth more. I think it's over because the market is much larger than it was and Bitcoin is not as dominant. So at the margin, the four-year cycle will have an impact, but not as large an impact. You know, for example, the ETH 2.0 thing is going to create a potential dynamic that's different. So um, I think I think the cycles have changed. And I think, you know, over time, these very volatile trends get less volatile. And we saw that with Amazon in its early days. It was like up and down 95%, then 65%. And then it just gets less and less and less because more people are in the network. So it's the same with crypto now. You know, there's there's 600 million people, 300 million people using it now. So what's happening is the volatility dampens. So, you know, the, I think the new down 85% is the new down 50, is the down 50 okay. where we are now. So it's kind of like we've had a bear market. We've been in a bear market for a year. You know, could it go down 65%? Possibly. But, you know, it's unlikely to go down 85%. People have a very recency bias and they only under, they only know what they know. And people who've been in the Bitcoin market have only been around, you know, a network adoption model for a decade. So they've only seen a few cycles. But if you go to Facebook, Amazon, Google, they've all had these for decades and you can see how they work and they tend to lower volatility over time.